Hello and welcome to The League Report with Luke. I'm Luke, let's get into the news. Now there's been a lot of rumours, a lot of gossip since my last video, my last League Report, but we're just going to be covering some from the last few days. The first being Kieran Foran's injury. He looks like he's set to miss the whole of 2020. Look, at this point in his career, Kieran Foran, he's injured more times than he isn't. However, when he's on the field, he's absolutely fantastic. It's just a shame he's constantly injured because he is so bloody good. We saw this past year. The talent is definitely there. The will to play is definitely there. His body just isn't holding up. It's also a shame the fact that he made it back to the test arena, playing for New Zealand, and he gets injured within the first five minutes, just making a regular routine tackle, and now he's going to be out for the whole of 2020. Now, as a Bulldogs fan, I've got to be honest, uh, the fact that he's missing the whole season doesn't really change too much for me, considering I figured he was going to be out for most of the season anyways. Jack Cogger, Lachlan Lewis, it's a great opportunity for them. However, Kieran Foran, he is a class player. Uh, on his day, I think he's definitely a right up there, top three halves in the game. It's just unfortunate that, you know, he's never really fit. Now, even though he got injured in the test match, I believe this is actually a different injury. Now, in the test match, I'm pretty sure he dislocated his shoulder. They've then gone in to fix it, and they've discovered that his rotator cuff is ruined as well. So he's had to have a few surgeries. So poor old Kieran Foran is in the walls, that's for sure. However, that does pose the question, should Kieran Foran retire? Leave in the comment section below. Do you think he should retire? I think he probably should. I mean, he's had a lot of injuries, and this is not just, oh yeah, shoulder injury. Uh, like, this is, he's had shoulder injuries, had leg injuries, he's had injuries everywhere. I know he's only 29, but yeah, he's had a lot, a lot of injuries and a lot of big injuries too. And Sam Burgess retire pretty recently, but Kieran Foran, if I've ever seen someone who would be more suitable to be medically retired, it would definitely be Kieran Foran. So yeah, I really don't know what to do for the Bulldogs. I mean, they're going to be out a lot of money this year in terms of salary cap wise, but like I said, it doesn't really change too much because I'm pretty sure Cogger and Lewis were expected to be the halves for a good part of the season anyways. Now it's just the whole season. Now you move on to someone who's been in the news big time, David Fafita. This time we're going to be talking about something a little bit different. Now, obviously, he's been in jail in Bali for his little drunken incident. I say little. It was a pretty big drunken incident. And the Broncos are looking to capitalize off that. They helped him out big time. They sent their lawyers over. They got him out. I mean, it did take 30 grand, but they got him out. And they're looking to re-sign him for four years on a $750,000 deal. At least that's what's been reported. Now, lately, there's been a lot of talk of player value and is this this player worth X amount and this player worth X amount. I think David Fafita is definitely worth 750000 He is absolutely outstanding. And between him and Payne Haas, if the Broncos can lock up David Fafita, they've got two of the best young forwards in the game. I also think it's a pretty smart move on the Broncos' behalf to try and lock him up after all this stuff's happened, sort of while he's uh, while they're still in the good books, I guess. So yeah, he's not exactly making some smart moves as of late. However, I do think it would be a smart move to re-sign with the Broncos. I think they're building up a pretty good foundation there with some of their young forwards. So yeah, David Fafita re-signing for four years, I think it's a good move from the Broncos. Moving on from one player who's been in the news constantly to another, Latrell Mitchell. This time, I guess we're going to be talking about one team. Now, in the past, we've been talking about uh, a number of teams, you know, your Bulldogs, your Knights, uh, a few others, even Roosters. But this time, we're just going to be talking about the Tigers. Apparently, he's set to move to the Tigers. Now, this one's a little bit of a weird one because some of the figures being thrown around aren't that much more than what he'd be making at the Roosters. And you think staying at the Roosters would maybe be a priority, at least. Like, he can stay there, win premierships. But it does look like he wants to play fullback. That's not going to happen at the Roosters. James Tedesco is there. James Tedesco is a better fullback than Latrell Mitchell at the moment anyways. However, Latrell Mitchell uh, looking for an opportunity. He has played fullback in the past. Let's remember, he did come into first grade playing fullback. All the comparisons to Greg Inglis. He ended up moving to the centers, and obviously, uh, he sort of made center his own. However, I always thought he would move back to fullback eventually. Is the Tigers the right move, though? I'm not sure. Uh, I think Corey Thompson is doing an okay job at fullback. However, if you can lock down a player like Latrell Mitchell, you don't pass up that opportunity. And if he wants to play fullback, you let him play fullback. He, he's that good of a player. And I think as long as his fitness is up to scratch, I think he'll be a great signing for the Tigers, especially if he's going to be on like 850, 900,000. I think it'd be a great signing for the Tigers. Also, just on Latrell, he's been getting bagged out in the media big time, but big props to Latrell Mitchell. He's been out in Tari helping out with all the fires that have been happening uh, as of late. The fires have been absolutely terrible, and the fact that he's gone out there and he's been helping out on the farms, I think it was. Big ups to Latrell Mitchell because he's getting bagged out big time, and the fact that he's gone out and done that while getting bagged out, I think it says a lot about his character. So yeah, good Good stuff, Latrell Mitchell. Now we move on to some sad news here. Slade Griffin has announced his retirement. Now, if you're unaware of who Slade Griffin is, which 
It is possible. He hasn't played in quite a while. Uh, he was the Knights hooker. He played for the Melbourne Storm. He's played for New Zealand. He's actually kind of done it all, really. He's uh, won a premiership with the Storm in 2017. He played for New Zealand. Uh, but he signed a pretty decent contract with the Knights, and he went over there to play hooker. He was actually playing very, very good as to how he got his New Zealand jumper. However, he ended up doing his knee. It was something he kept doing at the Storm, and he's gone to the Knights, and he's done it again. And obviously, he's had to retire, which is very unfortunate. However, I saw him running the water last year. So looks like he has a job after footy. However, it's just unfortunate for the Knights as well as Slade Griffin. The fact that they've signed Roy Kosh Jason uh, to come play hooker. He didn't even get in the field because he hurt his throat and ended up um, having to retire. Now they signed Slade Griffin who played about half a season. It was playing very, very good too. It was very, very good actually. Um, so... You know, they finally had their answer to the hooker, and then another injuries happen. Uh, I'd be very worried if I was Jaden Braley at this point, considering the track record. However, just unfortunate for Slade Griffin, because he's someone who I think had a lot of potential. He could play hooker, play lock, could play a number of positions. It was kind of like Brandon Smith at the Storm before Brandon Smith. Uh, maybe not quite as good as Brandon Smith, but uh, was quite versatile. And I thought it was a really good signing for the Knights when he first signed. So, yeah, it is unfortunate for both Slade Griffin and the Knights, however... Injuries happen. We're just talking about Kieran Foran being injured. Uh, we've already seen Greg Inglis, Sam Burgess retire due to injuries. It's just a part of the game, unfortunately. So we just took a detour with retirement news. Now we move back to the signings. We're back. Well, actually, we're looking at people leaving. This time, it's Shannon Boyd. He looks to be on the outer at the Titans. The lurker. I know it's the lurker. I don't know how good his track record is. Probably not very good. Between him and the mole... They're not really on the money a lot of the times. However, he is reporting that Justin Holbrook is not a fan of Shannon Boyd and is looking to get rid of him. Now, this one, I feel like any Joe Blow can look at here, look at this and say, yeah, Titans probably don't want Shannon Boyd. He's on a pretty big contract. Uh, he doesn't really play. I think he played 13 games or something. Now, they said he was injured. However, I've seen his stats from when he's at the Raiders. I never really rated him that much then. He's moved to the Titans on a big money deal after playing for Australia. How he played for Australia, I'll never know. But he played for Australia, he moved to the Titans, and I thought, yeah, that's not a good move from the Titans. He just doesn't fit the modern name player. Same way as sort of Sam Casiano. Those big bodies, uh, they just don't fit the modern game. And even Casiano was even more mobile than Shannon Boyd. Um, and also, if you look at Shannon Boyd's stats, he was a big body, but he never made huge meters or anything. So uh, I always found it strange how he got talked up so much. However... Yeah, it looks like they're trying to get rid of him. The only problem is he's on a pretty big contract and a long-term contract, I'm pretty sure, as well. I don't know who you're going to find to take him on. Uh, I can't see any club in the NRL uh, taking him on board. He's going to have to probably look to the Super League. That's what the Lurker is reporting. And I feel like a lot of this stuff the Lurker is doing right now, it's just it's just sort of common sense things. I mean, looking at a player who's on big money, not really playing, um, they've, Titans already got Leilani Latu stuck in reserve grade on big money. They don't need Shannon Boyd there as well. So it makes sense that they're trying to get rid of him. It's just, I don't know, seems common sense to me. Now moving on to the last story that I'm going to be talking about in this video. It's the Kepa Raiders. They're looking to re-sign a whole bunch of players. I think the article that I read said a multi-million dollar signing haul or something like that. Basically, they got a lot of players coming off contract. They've got Jack White and Jared Croker, uh, Nick Kotrick, Joey Leilua. A lot of big name players coming off contract at the same time, and they're looking to re-sign all of them. I suppose then you add in upgrades as well that will probably be happening, like John Bateman and a few of those sort of guys. Yeah, Raiders are going to be looking at a bit of salary cap problems, I reckon. It tends to happen a lot of the times when teams make the grand final. Players sort of see their worth, see their value, or at least get a, a highly inflated sense of worth in their head, or at least in their manager's head. So they go, oh yeah, I made the grand final. I'm pretty good. Give me a new contract. Now, Jack Whiten's kind of doing that at the moment. He's rejected his player option uh, to test his value on the open market, and I think he's asking about $1 million, another one to join the $1 million club, at least the asking club. Uh, whether he gets that, I don't know. I think the Raiders, I reckon they might give it to him. However, I probably wouldn't. I mean, he's only had one truly good season, uh, which was last year. Now, if he can replicate that, Congratulations, Jack White, and you just earned yourself a $1 million a year contract. However, at this point, he's only had one good season. I don't think you can give him $1 million as of yet. However, he is young. He's got all the fundamentals right. Um, it's just the fact that the Raiders are stuck by him in some troubled times, and he's gone ahead and rejected his player option for the one extra season. I find that a little bit weird. However, I don't know. I suppose the players' careers are short. We just talked about Slade Griffin retiring. Kieran Foran's retired as well. Not retired, but could be retiring. I mean, make as much money as you can, I guess. But uh, if I was the Raiders, I would look to re-sign Jared Croker first. He is your captain. He's been there for a long time. He definitely needs to be a one-club player. I would hate to see Jared Croker playing at any other team. So definitely lock up Jared Croker. Then you probably want to lock up Jack Whiten. He has also been a one-club player. And then you want to go Nick Kotrick. Nick Kotrick's a great player. Joey Leilua. 
he's an odd one out, I would be tempted to let him go. I think you can get um, players on pretty you know, pretty much the same value as what you get Joey Leilua. Basically, out of the four, if you had to get rid of one of them, which they probably will, I think Joey Leilua is your man. I think he is replaceable compared to the others. Anyway, guys, those are all of the stories for this episode of The League Report with Luke. Hopefully, you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you do around here. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It's on the screen right now. It's Mr. Luke and YT. My Facebook page is also in the description below as well. Been posting on that a little bit more. Also, make sure to leave in the comment section and uh, on all my social medias and that. Send me a message, uh, send me a comment, something like that. Uh, let me know of any rumors or any news you want me to talk about. Just anything that's relevant and newsworthy as of the last few days. I mean, I don't want to be going back a whole month and talking about something. But if it's happened in the last few days, definitely let me know and I can talk about it in the next video. Righto, guys, that's all i got to say. Hopefully, you did enjoy the video. I'll see you for the next one. Bye, guys.